diver Danny checks the rails one final time. Hey, it's in here. <laughs> Take that lift in here. You ready for go there, up the submarine. It's now 10 o'clock. High tide is just five hours away. Donald knows the success of the mission depends on perfect alignment of the submarine onto the cradles. To prevent waves or wind derailing the move this time, Donald plans to steer the O-boat by tightening and loosening four cables. He tethers two ropes to buoys in the sea and two to trucks on the pier. He must coordinate the truck movements precisely to shift with the tides and counteract waves to ensure the cradles engage with the hull's bulkheads. Touchdown with the cradles is critical. If the bulkheads do not perfectly align, the submarine will be unevenly balanced and could topple off the rails when the tide retreats. Donald mounts the submarine's conning tower. From here, he should have a clear view to line up the vessel with the tracks precisely. He orders his team into action. Clermont, tu peux commencer à juste tirer un peu. Les gars, faudra aller en avant, pousser un petit peu vers le, vers l'ouest. Twenty men haul ropes to guide the O-boat onto the cradles as the tide rises. Très beau, allez-y tout le temps, allez-y tout le temps. Oui, allez plus vite. It's now high tide, and the submarine is locked in position. If it's not properly aligned now, Donald could face disaster. With the submarine sitting in the cradles, Donald must begin the second stage of the move and winch the submarine out of the water. 40 years after the Onondaga launched, she glides gently back onto dry land. The omens look good. After four long hours, the submarine is out of the water. The team decides to complete the final 50-yard push to the mainland tomorrow. <laughs>